Well, having taken a very long time to do it, Hull City finally had themselves a new manager. It's Liam Rossini, and here is my reaction. Welcome back, everyone. Sorry for a quiet few days on the channel. I have still got COVID, but I'm functioning enough to talk about a returning face to the championship dugout picture as Liam Rossini is named as Hull City boss. Give us an early like on the video and do get your thoughts in via the comments on the possible fit for Hull and Rossini. I'll give you mine right now after we update the scores on the doors. That is now Watford, Rotherham, Sunderland, Cardiff, Borough, Hull, Stoke, West Brom and Huddersfield already changed manager since the championship season started. Now we know Rossini in the championship as a player and as an assistant manager. Hull fans will know him very well for 150 plus games as a fullback at the club from 2010. The Hull managerial picture has been an interesting one, let's just say, for the past year or so. Grant McCann got the Tigers promoted at the first attempt from League One, but was then removed from the post when Adrian Ilicharli brought the club back in January. I'm sure we're all pretty much okay with the idea that if you buy an organisation, you're entitled to put whoever you like in charge of said organisation. But... I'm sure we'd all agree that the subsequent hire thereafter of Shota Arvalaza didn't quite work out as Ilicharli's first Hull boss. The club secured safety last season with the big caveat that two other teams received points deductions. More of that later in this tale. But after some interesting recruitment in the summer, Arvalaza's side went on a horrible run. Five defeats in six and he was somewhat awkwardly fired on the morning of their TV game with Luton. For those keeping score, the Arvalaza firing happened in the month of September and he's been replaced in the month of November. So they've really taken their sweet time to do it. In the interim, Andy Dawson has secured nine points in eight games. And I'd say handing it off to Rossini with over a point per game secured, Dawson deserves a slap on the back from all concerned. That being said, big picture, it is now 10 defeats in 14 for Hull. So they do need an uptick in points accumulation or relegation does become a big probability. And they'll go into the bottom three if the game, I'm recording this on Wednesday, between Wigan and Stoke tonight ends level. I'll talk specifically on Resilient next, but first I need to give a quick shout out to our lovely partners at One Football. Now you can download their fabulous app for free via the link in the description. One Football is packed with stats powered by Opta, info and news. In fact, if you were to go in there right now and type in Hull, One Football will have already collected for you all of the best articles on this very story we're talking about right now. The big jewel in the crown though is the sweet deal that they've got with Serie A. One footballer able to stream one live Italian top flight match each and every Saturday coming up this weekend. Milan v Spezia and it's all free. How about that? Get downloading one football. Don't forget to go via the link in the description though so they know I sent you. Rossini's coaching journey started with Brighton under 23s. Then he moved to Derby as a coach under Philip Koku. But Koku was sacked and Rossini then became Wayne Rooney's assistant. Now, this is where it becomes very tricky to objectively judge Rossini like we judge other managers for a few reasons. Firstly, Derby were an absolute basket case in the last days of Mel Morris. And then went into administration. So there are these two opposing positions on Rossini that are both reasonably arguable. First, Rossini and Rooney did a fine job in remaining stoic in the face of utter chaos at Derby. They battled that huge points deduction, had a good home record, kept the fans on board, but ultimately went down, giving it a good crack. The second position is that they were in a no-lose situation and so long as dignity was maintained, which it was, nothing was really going to be considered a failure given such low expectations there. 
come up with whatever conclusion you think appropriate. Then we get the assistant manager paradigm, which I think needs far more thought than it gets in football discussion. Yes, Rooney and Rossini did appear as a genuine double act, consulting on every decision. And anybody who observed them working could see that Rossini was the more vocal of the two in games, one facet of the job. I think all too often football fans seem to have this weird fetish to want to praise the role of the assistant manager and love to throw out the he was the brains of the operation tag with really barely any idea of the actual operational workings of said partnership. Now, I'm not saying Rossini wasn't responsible for good stuff in the partnership. What I am saying is that I don't know. We're about to find out how good his ideas are though. After being pretty heavily linked with Blackpool in the close season, Rosinia did then stay on after Rooney left to manage Derby on his own in League One for the first nine games. And again, I'm not sitting on the fence. It's very hard to judge given they've just been relegated, they've just changed owners and pretty much signed most of a new first team to integrate. Then parlay in the fact that the record of 14 points from nine just feels pretty par down the middle to really judge too much on. I think new boss Paul Warren was keen to keep Rosinia around at Derby, but just didn't seem to be a chair for him. And he's elected to go solo. And here we are in a championship job just one month later. So my take then for what it's worth. Well, he speaks well, but then all football managers speak well, don't they? I happen to fall into the camp and I respect the opposing view that he and Rooney did perform well under the circumstances at Derby. I'm not going down the he's the brains of the operation cliche. I don't know, but I certainly think he assisted in a way commensurate with someone capable of stepping into the big seat and not being an assistant forever. Will he become a good manager? I think he's got the potential to do so, but I do worry slightly about the situation he's going into at Hull. It all looked very friendly with Mr. Illichali last night. And while I do think the Hull owner is right to go with someone with championship knowledge, I still don't necessarily trust him not to go and sign a load of players from the Turkish League in January and then be unhappy if Rosinia all of a sudden can't mould them into a team. I will add finally though that I do think he'll move Hull away from the relegation picture which right now is the most important thing and should be par with the squad they've got. Let me know your take down there in the comments. How do you think Rossini will do? Let me get to hit subscribe to see more videos just like this one and stay right there to hear me talk about the most recent link in the chain on this story. I say most recent. One month ago, I gave my thoughts. You can click up there on Shota Arvalaz's departure at the end of September.